I'm the under, ah. Ah. Yeah, I'm just going to record the meeting. So. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm the undergrad liaison, um, and I'm going to be, I guess, hosting the event for today. Um, I So today's event is about, like, interview to-dos, or tips and tricks, rather. Um, for the first part, I have a slideshow that I'm going to go through that you're welcome to hop in and ask questions. You can type them in the chat, whatever floats your boat. And then for the back half, we're gonna like go through some sample uh, questions that you could expect to hear during your interview. So I'm gonna share my screen and start going through it. Okay, can everyone see this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so welcome to our event. Um, before we get started, I just want, uh, could everyone on board also just introduce themselves for anyone who's not here? <laughs> I go first. Uh, yeah, most of you want to call us out. Um, yeah, I'm Tiffany. I am a seventh year MD PhD student at Ohio State. Um, and I'm the vice president of ABEPS. Hey, I'm. Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll go last. Sure. Um, hey, guys, I am Sylvia. I am a fourth year MD PhD student um, at U Chicago, and I am the director of outreach at ABAPS. Hey, everyone. My name is Jude Tooney. I'm a second year MD PhD student at OSU, Ohio State, and I am the uh, Director of, or sorry, Chief uh, Information Officer at Evans. Hey uh, guys, I'm uh, John Carlo Valiente. I am uh, the president of ABAPS and I am uh, first year uh, resident at uh, University of Madison, or sorry, University of Wisconsin Madison. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, so uh, this is the general like structure and topics we're gonna go over. So timeline, uh, some tips about scheduling, uh, the actual interview structure, kind of some logistics, tire recommendation um, and other advice and some POC specific advice and then some next steps after the interview. Ah, sorry, okay. so. Just a couple of quick notes. Like I said, feel free to interrupt with any questions, um, either by just talking or you can type them in the chat, whatever you'd like. Um, also, every school's interview process is very different. Um, so a lot of the times you're gonna hear me say, like it varies, it varies, but it really does. Um, I'm gonna do my best. We're gonna do our best to speak broadly. Um, and also, um, even though we think our advice is super helpful, um, it's up to you to decide ultimately what to do. Um, I like highlight what's advice versus like fact. So um, yeah, like, you know, take with it what you will. So um, this is taken straight from the AAMC website, just, and also I apologize, I live in an intersection. So if you hear cars, I'm sorry. Um, so this is the overall timeline um, for those applying right now. Um, you send in your primaries, uh, probably send in your primaries, send in your secondaries. Um, so you can expect interviews to maybe start trickling in mid-September, late September, and it goes until the end of March, maybe early April. Um, and most schools are rolling, so you can expect to get uh, admissions, according to them, December, it can come earlier. Um, just kind of depends. Um, so in regards to scheduling, um, as I just said, a lot of programs are rolling admissions. So they kind of admit people as they have spots. Um, so it would behoove you to schedule your interviews like in the early interview sessions as you can. Um, a piece of advice, not everyone agrees. This is, I guess, a Melissa specific thing. I was told, if possible, maybe don't schedule your first interview with like your very top choice, just so you could possibly get a practice run if you aren't able to practice with other people. Um, but again, that's just something I was told. I didn't even do that. 
I wish I would have, but um, yeah, uh, just a tip. Um, and that being said, the order that you ultimately schedule them is very much dependent on you and your circumstances. I took two gap years and I was working a full-time job. So, and I was in California and all my interviews are on the East Coast. So trying to negotiate travel with vacation was kind of hard. And so how you schedule them, you know, just depends on your circumstances. Um, but also a lot of interviews are compensated everyone that I did was either partially or fully compensated, which is really nice. Um, it takes some of the burden off of you. Also the interview's longer, so I would expect some help. Uh, um, so the general structure of MD-PhD interviews, they're normally two days, could be like one and a half to two and a half um, days, but two is easy to work with. The first day or one of the days is like the medical school specific interview day. So you're going to be with the medical school like applicant pool at large. And the other day is going to be MD PhD specific. So just those applicants and maybe there's like 15 people. It's significantly smaller. So in your medical school interview, there's like two formats generally. There's your traditional format. Um, so you have like two or three interviews uh, with people in the medical school. Um, one's gonna be a student, one's gonna be a faculty member. And then you may or may not have an additional interview with like someone from the admissions office or some administrative department. I remember during interviews, I met with people from like school's diversity offices. Um, so that's a possible third interview. And they asked like pretty standard questions or questions that I don't know, you could probably expect like why medical school, why a doctor, um, like what's your biggest flaw, like stuff like that. But we'll talk about some of those later as well. Um, and then the other format, uh, everyone's favorite, the MMI. Um, this was a pretty new interview format. It started like a year or two before I applied. Um, and basically you have these stations or rotations uh, that you go to and they can last like five to 10 minutes, um, six, 10 minutes I put. And you basically are performing some small tasks. It's pretty quick. And they wanna be able to figure out your ability basically to think on your feet, but also think like constructively and logically um, under pressure uh, because medicine. Um, again, each station is very different. When I looked it up online just to get some samples, uh, just so I didn't have to work from my memory, it seems like they're themed around like an ethical sort of thing or and problem solving and teamwork. Um, so those are just very general things. But again, what they ask you to do varies. Uh, um, so outside of the interview, which is, you know, the major chunk, um, you can and expect, expect to have a lot of informational sessions. So they'll talk about like curriculum, student organizations, uh, financial aid is gonna be talked about as well. Um, kind of like why their city or their state is the best, different outreach programs. Um, it's really, I mean, I enjoyed listening to that. Um, for me, as I kind of noted, the curriculum description is like very important. Um, it's something I didn't take seriously enough um as in like yeah a school described their curriculum and it's you know you ultimately want to pick the place where your learning style fits the school um and so yeah it's yeah something I wish I just would have paid more attention to um not that I'm unhappy at case case school but just a detail um so after all these informational sessions uh you can expect to have a dinner and some sort of social event um and then either stay with a student or at a hotel, which I kind of talk about later. So that's uh, the first day. Um, the second day is going to be, like I said, the, very, the MD, PhD specific day. Um, oh, is there a question? Oh, that's just you. Got you. Um, so yeah, it's MD, PhD specific. Um, the interview cohort is pretty small. Um, and interestingly enough, like as you start to crew interviews, you'll start to see the same faces over and over again, or at least I did, it was kind of weird. Um, but anyways, 
Uh, so on the MD PhD day, you are going to have, I set, I remember like four to six interviews, but at one school I had eight at one school I had three again, wide range. Um, and they're 30 minutes to an hour, again, depending on how many you get. Um, you can, again, definitely expect to meet with student, a student, definitely some PIs that you request in advance with an administrator, a director, whoever handles that. And then you'll also usually meet with a director or someone from like this steering committee, which is the committee that helps decide who gets in and is a representative for the MD PhD. Um, so during your PI interviews, which is the highest like quantity of interviews you're gonna be dealing with, they're basically gonna be asking you to describe your research project. Um, and they're looking to make sure, one, you know your project and like you didn't take a very passive role or, any, or at least you can describe it well, um, and you can sell it. Um, and also they're gonna be, some PIs ask like weird details. I, I don't know, I once, in one of my interviews, they asked what are the steps in an IF, which I thought was a little excessive, but generally you can expect to hear like, describe your research. Um, and in a lot of my interviews, a lot of the PIs like, cause we're all nerds, they just want to talk about their research too. Um, so being able to engage with them, like being able to process what they're talking about and kind of engage with them is also something that I think is important. Um, so yeah, so after the interviewing, you'll again have informational sessions about the program, the program structure, some, yeah, it's mainly the program structure, I guess some student orgs, but a lot of the orgs are gonna be with like the medical school, but again, depends. Um, you'll have a dinner and again, a social event. So that takes up two days. And again, we're gonna talk about like more questions to expect later. Um, so in so in regard to like logistics, traveling and housing logistics, um, so the program will schedule housing for you in advance. When they invite you for an interview, you'll hear from an administrator or the director, depending on the program. Um, and they'll put you in a hotel that's either walking distance or they'll give you a bus, whatever or you'll stay at a student's house, or it'll be a mixture. Um, I liked having the mixture. I mean, not that you have to say, uh, but I liked having a mixture because like the night before the interview, it's nice to just have like peace and quiet, whatever in a hotel, but then also being able to see firsthand what like medical student or MD, PhD student life is like. Um, but again, they'll handle all of that, which is really nice. Um, and so generally, uh, applicants or interviewees just need to pay for their transportation, whether that be flight, if you're driving distance, that's wonderful. Um, but a lot of schools will help you out with that, which is really nice. Um, and then also meals and socials for MD day and MD PhD day is paid for, um, which is nice. Yeah. Okay, so attire. Um, so naturally you want to wear quite professional attire. Um, and a few directors that I've spoken to said that like you're being evaluated on this. Um, so be careful with what you pick or just be air on the side of being conservative. I'll say that. Um, so I mostly wore dress pants and shirts just because interviews were in the winter a lot of the time and I was on the east coast um and but if you like to wear dresses you know make sure they cover the knee you have tights um for uh men or you know male identifying people just wear suit long tie um for people who are considering wearing heels please wear short ones but yet wear flats I wore flats all season. Um, there's a lot of walking around the campus. You have to like kind of hop interview to interview or someone will guide you. They're not just right next to each other. Um, try and limit the number of piercings you have. I have nine in my ears and I pulled them all out for my interviews. And my director later on said, if you would have had them in, I don't know if I would have pulled you. Again, he's a weirdo, but just be mindful of what 
yeah, what jewelry you wear and things like that. Um, and also a really minor tip, maybe like if you have really long hair, maybe wear it up just so it's, I don't know, you're less inclined to play, play with it or whatever, it doesn't get in your face. That's a super minor detail just for easiness sake. Um, yeah. Oops. Okay. Um, so some other advice generally, um, of course I would certainly like research the program pretty thoroughly uh, before you go, even if it is just the night before, just be sure to definitely know about the MBTHD program and the medical school and remember a couple reasons why you want to attend and preferably not like super general, like be able to either name organizations or like specific parts of the curriculum that you're interested in, uh, whatever you pick. Um, also, I would know the PI's research that you're interviewing with uh, pretty well. Again, so you can be engaged and like ask questions and they'll like it and they'll wanna keep talking. Um, I would also keep pen and paper with you again so like jot down notes in any of your interviews again it just helps you seem really engaged and interested and then also just to remember information that you got you'll you get usually like papers with information but in case there's something you hear that isn't there it's always nice to just have pen and paper um and then finally like for the dinner and social events um assume that someone is judging that sounds so harsh but just be on your like best behavior that's also a weird phrase but like yeah just assume that someone is watching you and you don't like like for dinner you're allowed to drink but don't get inebriated or don't say anything like inflammatory to to like your interviewing peers or the students again like this is all being a part of your performance evaluation um so a few pieces of advice about what to look for, like specifically as a POC um, doing MBPC interviews. So there is very few uh, like limited diversity and there are very few URMs. The year I matriculated, there were 39 black MBPHDs across the United States. Um, and I think now it's 42. I checked for this last cycle. And I think for Latinx students, it's even lower. It's more like 30 to 35. Um, and I think across the United States, there's like 800 uh, matriculants. So just very limited. Um, but that being said, try and take note of how many URMs are potentially like how many interviewees there are, how many are in the class ahead of you or the entire program. Um, and also in the medical school, of course, the medical school is going to be much larger. So you would expect there to be more um, URMs, uh, but take note. I remember one interview I went on, uh, their class, uh, the first year class had 104 students and there were three URMs in the medical school class. Um, and they also hid that statistic. I had to find that. So if they're hiding their diversity stats, that's quite telling um, and just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, look for diversity in the med school class. Also the graduate school um, on your interview, you don't, you don't have like a graduate school day or hear about the graduate school. It's just the MD PhD, which is, I mean, it incorporates the grad school, but if you can like try and kind of look around at uh, the makeup of grad students as well. Um, POC faculty are quite, are also pretty few and far between, especially PIs, um, very, very few uh, black PIs, which is sad, um, but we're doing the thing. So we're gonna change that. But um, again, just something to take note of. Um, uh, I would also keep an eye out if the school has an office of diversity and if they don't just kind of see different initiatives they have like to like either recruit uh, URM students or like funding to SNMA conferences or different service things or student organizations, um, things like that I think are very important um, because again, like keeping in mind that there are so few URM students you, 
ideally would like to go to a program where they support you and are making active efforts to recruit and retain URM students. So um, definitely look for that. Um, and a few interviews, like when you indicate your URM, they will have you go to, usually at the medical school, they'll have you go to sessions um, hosted by their diversity office, or later there'll be a social event for URMs, whatever that may be. Um, it's nice when that happens. And I think it means a lot. Uh, and it's very promising for the school. Um, I would also note how much kind of outreach or engagement that a school, again, the medical school has with the pop, like the surrounding community or the underserved uh, population in the city area, whatever. Again, I think as physicians and we are serving like our patients and the community and society, whatever, how broadly you wanna take it. Um, I think it's important when that a school engages um, with individuals that really need the help. Um, and then finally, uh, ask about anti-racism efforts by the, okay. Um, ask about anti-racism efforts by uh, the MDPhD program or the College of Medicine, um, especially like in the last few years, a lot of schools have made a more conscious effort to decrease like prejudice, discrimination, promote inclusion. Um, I know our program director like made a statement and like started having like committees and like stuff like that. Um, and I imagine other schools have done the same thing. A lot of schools followed in suit. Um, so like that is just something also that's really important to keep in mind in. Um, I, just, I just wanted to chime in here. Um, uh, I mean, Melissa made a really good point on this. It is very little like diversity, but um, with that, you know, you wanna make sure that the people like the non POCs are, can also advocate for you and also care about anti-racism and are gonna be able to support you because there's just not enough people that you can't all rely on people that look like us. So um, asking these questions to your directors, whether they be white or otherwise, and seeing what the hell, how they respond to that and really take into account, like, does this person seem like someone that can support me and understands the, the things that I may be going through? Um, so that's all I wanted to say. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, please. No, that was a great point. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we all need support. We gotta find the right program that does. Um, and then my final tidbit. Um, as a POC, and again, being very rare, a lot of programs are really looking to recruit you. So try and be as confident as you can be. Of course, interviewing is nerve wracking. The whole process is a lot. It's two days of interviews, but you are being recruited and you're going to do awesome. So just keep that in mind. Um, so after your interviews, um, which everyone's going to do great on, um, you can send out thank you emails like to the director, PIs, I didn't, but some, I know some people who did, some people who say you should, you know, just you can. Um, and then when you finish your interview, um, you'll hear one of three things. If you're rejected, whatever, on to better things. Um, some programs will push you into the MD only pool. I think almost every school I applied to, that's a thing. Um, and so you'll expect, you'll be on a different, like a slightly different timeline on when to hear back, but um, yeah, they'll do that automatically. Um, Can I interject real quick? Sure, of course. Um, <clears throat> when you talk about like sending a thank you, I would say you should, it doesn't hurt if you do. And I, and I had better experiences doing that. Um, I just like sent a thank you to basically everyone who interviewed with me. And yeah, so I think it can help to leave a good impression. Um, yeah. And actually, I, I want to add on top of that, if I can, is the all good points is that uh, we're, of course, becoming more, uh, you know, electronic and technological as we go on. Um, 
<clears throat> and uh, I think that it is preferred at this point onwards in 2021 going forward to just email the thank you letter because it's still a letter um, and and that way it is it's in their email it's like memorialized because at the end of the day I'm not saying if you did a, a physical letter that's bad in the past but it's gonna go in the trash I can I, I'm, I'm not saying that to be mean. It's just, unless they're a hoarder, it's going to go in the trash. People and, actually wrote real letters. I didn't know. Yeah, I, that. okay, I'm that old then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've I never written to, an actual letter. I did for my, um, for getting in, but that was, you know, a long time ago now. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I would recommend emailing it. Um, so, and it's easier for you, et cetera, all that stuff. Sorry. No, please, nothing. I appreciate the input. Y'all were clearly better applicants than me. So we'll change that optional to highly recommended. <laughs> um, so yeah, do that. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, you'll just hear if you get rejected, whatever, keep it pushing. They don't deserve you anyway. Um, they might push you to the MD only pool. Um, if you're accepted, that's awesome. You can keep them in the back of your head um, when you ultimately make your decision. Um, if you are waitlisted, uh, you will have to ultimately wait for the program uh, to either accept you or reject you. Um, it is it can be drawn out, unfortunately, um, but yeah it, you just have to wait um at a school that i was waitlisted that i really wanted to go to um and something that's recommended you can send what's called a letter of intent uh to the program or to the director which is basically saying like i still really want to go to your program and here's some things that i've done since interviewing that makes me a good candidate and like kind of makes me stand out so uh to that program i think like I submitted a publication, I think, between when I interviewed and sending the letter. And I think I did some shadowing or something. Um, it doesn't have to be long or anything. Again, it's just to remind them that you're actually interested and want to be considered. Um, something I just a really minor detail. Um, when you're accepted, again, keep it in mind as a school that you're interested in. If you know, or you're leaning towards not going, like if you have multiple acceptances, um, but you know you're not gonna go, try and let the program know as soon as possible, just because you would be freeing up a spot for someone else to get in or to be pulled off the wait list. And I feel like ultimately it's really courteous, but do it if you know you're not going to go. If it's your first acceptance, please, please don't. Um, so yeah, um, that is about it um thank we you got one question in the chat um so they're asking is a blazer necessary for interview attire or is a professional suit slash blouse sufficient so i'm going to throw it to you um i wore a blazer over it i think i know i walked in with one but if like i mean i got sweaty immediately um i like took it off but I at least had it there so they knew I had it, but I don't know how mandatory it is if anybody else wants to chime in. Yeah, I really mean, I, I wore I wore a blazer uh, with mine and, and I would I would probably recommend doing that. Um, I'm just thinking about the next thing for me is like residency interviews and I think everybody wears like blazer on top. And then like, again, you can take it off if you have a nice shirt to take off if it, you know, if you, you know, don't be like drenched in sweat, you know, <laughs> but, but I, I would, I would have one, um, to wear and then maybe take it off if, if you felt, felt like you needed to. Probably try and move on. Is there any other questions? Uh, please throw them in the chat. We can answer them as we go on, but we can move on to the next portion of our evening, which is really exciting. Uh, we created these breakout rooms with different uh, kinds of questions that you can expect to get on your interview. So it's going to be an MMI breakout room, MMI style questions, it's going to be traditional MD interview type question room, 
and an MD PhD specific question from. So what's going to happen is I'm going to open up the rooms and then you're free to choose your room. Uh, if please limited to three people to a room. So if you join a room and there's already two people in that 